So, hi, I'm Thomas Szyzejewski, and the topic of this presentation uh, is building open WRT with the Yocto project. Uh, here is the agenda of this presentation. Uh, first, I will introduce myself and the company I work in. Then we will briefly talk about the, what open WRT is uh, and how it can be built. Next, I will mention the advantages of using the Yocto project over open WRT build system. In the next section, I will try to thoroughly discuss the meta open WRT layer, uh, which is the main topic of this presentation. And the entire presentation will be crowned with attempts to run the open WRT system on Raspberry Pi 4, both using the ready-made uh, system provided by the open WRT community and an image built with the use of meta open WRT. I will finish my presentation with quick summary. So uh, once again, my name is Tomasz Zieski. I'm an embedded system engineer at FreeMDEP. I have been with FreeMDEP for uh, two years during which I gained experience related to Yocto. My main interest is the integration of update systems to, to target solutions, mostly based on SW update, as well as the analysis and optimization of system performance with emphasis on boot time. If you would like to contact me, you can use email list here or just find me on Twitter. Mm, I would like also to share a few words about FreeMDEP. FreeMDEP is an embedded system consulting company. We are based in Gdańsk, Poland, and one of our main goals is to promote open source solutions by using them on firmware and systems we work on. We strongly believe that open source is the right way to safely use the devices around us. Uh, okay, so the OpenWRT project is a Linux operating system targeting embedded devices. And instead of trying to create a single static firmware, the OpenWRT provides a fully variable uh, file system with package management. This frees everyone from the application selection and configuration provided by the vendor and allows to customize the device through the use of packages to suit any application. The OpenWRT project was started in 2004 after Linksys had built the firmware for the WRT 54G series of wireless routers with code licensed under the GNU. Fun fact is that the OpenWRT releases were historically named after cocktails such as Right Russian, Kamikaze, Backfire, Attitude Adjustment, Biobreaker, and Chaos Calmer and the recipes uh, were included in the message of the day, displayed after logging in using the command line interface. OpenWRT officially supports over 70 hundreds of different devices. The full list is available on the project website and at the link on this slide. For the latest releases from version 18.06, it is recommended that the device to run OpenWRT was at least 16 mega, uh, has at least 16 megabytes of flash memory and 64 megabytes of RAM, with 128 megabytes being preferred. Nowadays, these requirements do not seem to be difficult to meet. Uh, there are many reasons for using OpenWRT. Among them, we can mention the extensibility. There are over 3,000 packages ready to be installed on the device, and this allows the system to be reproduced regardless of the platform. The security, by being an open source project, the OpenWRT is checked by many developers from around the world, so that any vulnerabilities are closed shortly after they are discovered and the life of used routers is extended. The community support, there are many forum users or mailing lists users uh, who are waiting to help us with the system we want to run on our devices. And there is our research, because a lot of research work related to networking is carried out on OpenWRT systems, uh, thanks to which the latest discoveries are available in the first place here. Uh, looking through the history of OpenWRT releases, we get the impression that at the moment there is no such thing as a stable release cycle. Uh, some versions are released month after month, while other times the breakup is to up to 20 months. 
Um, the last stable version is version 19.07, and to be exact, exact is 1907.7, and it was it was released on February 18, 2021. The next planned stable release is to be version 21.02, and at the moment the release candidate has been released on April 26 this year. Naming versions can be confusing, but their name comes from the month and year in which the branch for the next release was created. Many platforms listed in the hardware table are not supported in the latest releases, but nothing prevents us from try, trying OpenWRT also on them. All versions are available for download from the project website. Uh, as mentioned before, mm, the OpenWRT provides several thousand ready-to-download packages. A search engine is available on the project website, allowing to conveniently browse the packages included in the last stable release. After running OpenWRT on the target platform, additional packages can be installed via the web UE, which is the Lucy, or the command line interface. In the case of Lucy, we need to connect to the device and then run the address 192.168.11 in the browser. The address uh, should be that by default. And the software available for installation is listed in the software section. In the case of the command line interface, packages are managed using OPKG. Important for the meta OpenWRT layer, is the um, access to the source code of packages used in OpenWRT. Many of them are available from the project website, such as Lucy code. There are also two GitHub repositories containing a set of core and community packages. Many packages have a large set of patches that provide improvements typically for OpenWRT. Of course, this set may differ depending on the version, so all of these repositories I divided into appropriate branches corresponding to the given releases. So the 2102 or 19.07, etc. The OpenWRT development environment and build system, uh, known together as OpenWRT build, build root, are based on a heavily modified build root system. So it is a set of make files and patches that automates the process of building a complete Linux-based OpenWRT system for an embedded device by building and using an appropriate cross-compilation toolchain. Uh, OpenWRT build root use kconfig for the configurations of all options, handle standard image build workflow from downloading the source code to preparing the packages. Uh, a set of patches provided, provide and constant updates of components ensure us that uh, ensure of constant removal of reported problems. Since the OpenWRT build system is actually some kind of build it on steroids, trying to settle the dispute over which build system is better can be boiled down to the build root versus the Yocto discussion. Uh, each of them has their supporters and opponents. A lot of opinions can be found on the internet forums that may affect our feelings about a given solution. Often, the own conclusions describe that build it is quite simple, isn't quick to learn, build system, where Yocto has a higher entry threshold, is more complicated, but also allows us to prepare advanced operating systems. Personally, I think that Yocto allows us to prepare more professional systems. A big advantage here is the way of managing the elements included in the system. The division into layers allows for a logical separation of certain related functionalities. In addition, many hardware vendors have their own the board supported package layers. Thanks to this, we can easily add, for example, the OpenWT functionalities via the Meta OpenWT to our new platform. Now let's go over the available Meta OpenWT layer. The source code here is available on GitHub at the link provided in the presentation. Maintainer is the Cam Rush. And in the repository, we see three branches, the master, downfall, and hard branch. 
Uh, on the master, we see that this layer should be compatible with the gates card and the hard node versions. So they are the last two stable Yocto releases. Uh, according to the available information, this layer has 19 contributors. On the slide, we can see a graph of the contribution over time. Unfortunately, we can say the meta OpenWT has not been much developed recently. Perhaps in the near future, it will be possible to change this. Um, so the readme of the repository contains some useful information to get you started with this layer. Um, we see information about the need to add the OpenWRT distro default class to the inherit variable and to set this ellipse to muscle. Among the limitations of the meta OpenWRT layer, uh, the minimal version of Yocto that should be compatible with it was indicated which is SUMO, so the version 2.5. The layer itself provides three targets that can be built. There are OpenWRT image minimal, uh, OpenWRT image base, and the full version. The minimal version only includes the command line interface without installing the UI. The base version adds Lucy to this, and the full version includes some additional network-related packages such like uh, TCP dump. Mm, the only inconsistency in the instructions for preparing the layer, uh, the only inconsistency is the instructions in, in preparing the layers for the build. Uh, it seems that the meta node.js and the meta node.js contrib layers that are mentioned in the readme uh, can be safely omitted. Uh, so now let's move on to what the meta OpenWRT layer actually provides. Here we can see recipes divided into core, extended networking support, and tweaks groups. These recipes are to deliver um, to um, deliver packages intended for the OpenWRT system. So here we have metadata related to Lucy or PROSD, so closely related to the OpenWRT system as well as more default ones such as host APD or DNS mask. Um, the Linux BPP, BP append file sets uh, IP set and bridge configuration as models into the Linux kernel uh, for now. Um, the packages closely related to OpenWRT such as the Lucy, NetIft or the IWinfo uh, download the source code from the official project servers. Um, each of them has its own revision indicating the code version and a possibly, possible set of patches that can be found in the repositories available on GitHub. It needs to be kept in mind when updating a given package to the version currently available in OpenWRT. As the development of this system on the master branch is quite dynamic and main changes can happen overnight, uh, it needs to be decided how to prepare these packages in meta OpenWRT. Perhaps an appropriate approach would be to map the stable releases of the OpenWRT itself. What's more, many packages also have configuration files or scripts that allow to use them also stored in repositories on GitHub. Often these are init scripts especially configured to run on OpenWRT. Uh, they also need to be installed when preparing the package in the Yocto build system. Uh, the situation is even worse in the case of packages that take the source code from default sources not prepared for OpenWT. In such cases, these packages often have many patches that modify the operation of the program, especially for the OpenWT system. And for example, for host IPD and uh, uh, 19.07 branch, uh, there is over a fifth patches that should be applied to the host APD. Uh, the meta OpenWT layer uses several classes to configure the recipes or files. Among them, we have the aforementioned OpenWT distro default, which sets ProsD as the init system also sets the distro features variables and pulls other BB classes into the configuration. Another class is OpenWRT base files, which is used by several recipes. 
Its task is to provide the source URI variable of the OpenWRT repository to enable the installation of the configuration and scripts I mentioned earlier. Uh, while working with the layer, I noticed that it is quite important to align the revision of this repository with the revisions of the source code of individual packages so that the configuration files or the in scripts are compatible with each other. And last, there is an issue tab of this repository. We found uh, there are 12 open problems described by users of this layer. Uh, some of them have been open for several years, but we can say that they are supported because uh, each of them is commented on by the maintainer, or most, most of them. And uh, additionally, any proposed changes are willingly accepted, which allow us, the Yocto community and layers, layer users, to work on this product to increase its popularity and usability. Okay, so now I will shortly describe the hardware I use for this uh, presentation. I choose the Raspberry Pi 4 as a hardware to work with Meta OpenWRT. Uh, thanks to Davis' subtlety and easy access, products marked with the Raspberry are perfect for all kinds of tests and experiments. As far as the parameters for this presentation are concerned, the RPI4 has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 1 gigabit Ethernet port, and CYW4456 wireless LAN hardware. Although in the basic test that I will perform, Wi-Fi connectivity will not be used. Uh, if it is about the OpenWT system, the earlier uh, Raspberry Pi models have stable releases prepared for them, while the Raspberry Pi 4 is still based on snapshots, which are versions constantly being improved by the community. In the prepared proof of concept, I would like to verify the following functionalities. The logging into the device via the console, the access to the system lock, uh, which should enable debugging, which should allow us to debug errors and uh, help in further repairs. And the connecting to local PC, uh, the connecting the local PC to RPI via the Ethernet cable to, and obtaining an IP address on the PC logging into the RPI via the SSH protocol and launching, launching, launching Lucy in the browser and attempting to change the configuration through the options available there. Many threads that can be found on the internet about using the OpenWT system suggest that any modifications should be made via the command line interface and logging in via the SSH protocol or using the Lucy. A verification of the above requirements will be a good start to the further development of the Meta OpenWRT layer. Um, personally, I became interested in the Meta OpenWRT layer at the turn of 2020 and 2021. Uh, I found it through the Open Embedded Layer Index, and I wanted to use it in a project when which, in which one of the, the elements was to provide the functionality known from the OpenWRT system. I really like the fact that such a layer even exists because I really prefer using the Yocto over the build root. I think the former is more elegant, as I mentioned before. And uh, also though that the preparing the OpenWAT system using a different than the default build system would allow me to get to know the system itself better, which I haven't used much before. The purpose of the presentation itself is also to increase interest in the meta OpenWAT layer. As mentioned before, there is no stable OpenWT release that can be run on API 4 yet. There are, however, snapshots, the version still in development. The discussion about it was linked on the slide, just like the image I used in tests. Running the community version of OpenWT will allow to make comparisons and draw conclusions. Additionally, uh, having a properly working image and knowing the expected effects will make it easier to make corrections to meta OpenWRT. Uh, in the slide, we see a bootlog from the mentioned image. Uh, we are logged into device via the UART, so a UART USB converter is needed for this. Uh, the current RX and 
their eggs pins are easily accessible on the Raspberry Pis and their location can be easily checked in the network. Uh, so now we can check the system logs. For this, we can use the log read available from the BusyBox package. Running it with the appropriate flags allows to read incoming logs. Uh, another test is to check the possibility of connecting the local PC to the device and verify the operation of the DHCP server. Uh, immediately after connecting the cable, we get the IP address. In this case, it is the 1.105. After connecting local PC with API uh, by using the Ethernet cable, it's time to test the SSH server on the device. Uh, we can easily log in using the default device address, which is the 192.168.11. And for now, the password for root is, uh, is not set on the first setup. Mm, now we can also verify the Lucy. In order to access, uh, we need to start the browser and enter the IP address on the device of the device that we used earlier for the SSH connection. We also use the root account to log in uh, temporarily without a password. After logging in, we see a fully functional Lucy providing information about the operation of the router, the resource used by it, uh, with the possibility of changing configuration files or tracking the statistics. The last test performed is the attempt to change the configuration. The choice was to set the password for the root account via Lucy. To do this, go to the system and then administration, generate the password and click save. Uh, the password should be successfully modified. Uh, we can verify that by logging again into the Lucy or trying to connect to the device via the SSH. Having some results that we can follow, let's move on to building an image based on Meta OpenWRT. Uh, as it was mentioned in the README, we can present uh, the a set of necessary dependencies. It will be a POCI and Meta Open Embedded uh, layers. And from the Meta Open Embedded, we need to get, take the Meta OA, uh, Meta Python, and Meta Networking. We also need a Meta Raspberry Pi layer that provides the RTE4 support in the form of machine configuration file, among others. Um, the slide also shows specific layer revisions that were used when generating the image for testing, that uh, some can use it and try to reproduce uh, the results we get. Before starting the build process, we need to modify the configuration. Uh, we know from the documentation to set this ellipse to Mosul and uh, add the OpenWRT distro defaults class to the inherit variable. Additionally, we want the, the console to be available for use on RPI4. And for this, we will use the enable UART variable, uh, which is defined in the matter of BerryPy. Uh, the above changes can be included in the local conf configuration file, um, but I personally recommend that, uh, th that using the CAS tool for managing the layers included in the project. Uh, CAS will also, was also, uh, also allows uh, us to prepare the configuration files such as local conf and BB layers configuration files. Mm, at the previous edition of the Yocto Summit, uh, there was a presentation showing the, the CAS tool as one of the possible, way, possible layer management tools. Mm, the first booting of the image ends with minimal success. Uh, as we can see, we come to the prompt for the root user without any problems. Uh, we also see the name of the distribution prepared for this presentation. Uh, doubts may be raised by the uh, root at none prompt, which would mean the problems with host name in the system. This could be the beginning of further problems. Mm, so we go next and uh, further testing does not bring any better news. Uh, attempting to read system logs and up uh, with problems uh, with finding the lock object. 
uh, network feature also seems to be malfunctioning uh, after connecting Ethernet cable between API and the local PC. We did not receive an IP address as it was on the community driven image and we are not able to find the router in the network. So the testing, the testing with SSH protocol connectivity was not feasible. The networking did not get up on API and one of the scripts needed for that if the function was missing. Uh, adding it, the Mac Adel 211 script did not solve the problem with the lack of an IP address assignment. So maybe the problem is with the DNS mask and the missing patches from the OpenWAT repository. Without, the, uh, without an IP address on the local PC, uh, you are not able to uh, try and test the Lucy on this image. Uh, running the network script to set up network interfaces required creating a log folder under the path run log. One of the open issues also mentions this problem. Uh, maybe it will help us to push the development further. Adding a log also made it possible to use logread to read system logs. Uh, from the analysis, we can see further problems. Uh, the DNS mask does not start, and this is probably why we didn't get the IP address. The log indicates that the problem may be a misconfiguration during the compilation, and it may be a clue that will lead to the solution of the IP assignment problem. The UHTTPD has a problem with Lua scripts, which could lead to Lucy not working properly in the future. Uh, we also see that the system lacks several basic packages, the, including drop beer that would allow SSH connection uh, to the router and collect the responsible for collecting information, information and then displaying it on the Lucy subpages. In the table, I present a comparison between the open and open WT image available from community versus an image produced with the meta open WT. Uh, at the moment, it does not look good and many functionalities do not work properly immediately after installation. Uh, such a test set seems appropriate to start with and solving these problems should push meta open WT development forward. I believe that the fully functional meta open WRT layer can be used very willingly in the future. And I hope that I will be able to develop its functionality with the help of other volunteers. And that's it for this presentation. We as free and Dep are open to cooperate and discuss. So feel free to contact us uh, if you believe we can help you in any way. <laughs>